Hello everybody, Brian Tulsa here. What are you doing today? Today I'm watching the next part of Turmoil and the Toy Box Deception of a Generation. We are on part three. Uh, part one and two were extremely well researched, uh, well thought out, and uh, really enlightening, and it really educated me on uh, toys and their spiritual roots. So I'm sure part three will be just as good. Uh, it picks up right where part two left off. Um, somebody bas basically just took the whole video and cut it up into different sec sections without paying any attention to whether it was a good point to break or not. So uh, this is just under 10 minutes long. Uh, some of these parts like stop right in the middle of a sentence, but we're just gonna do one part at a time because, um, because th I think those are nice bite-sized chunks, you know. It, we can digest, you know, 10 minutes at a time. So last, in the last part, they really focused on He-Man. Um, let's see which toy property or cartoon or both from the 1980s uh, was satanic. Um, so get your popcorn ready or oh, get your drinks ready, more important, uh, because we do have the drinking game. Uh, you should take a drink every time they say the word occultic. Occultic. If you're doing this drinking game, if you're drinking along with me, I highly recommend not doing uh, the whole thing, like eat all parts back to back, uh, because you could die. Uh, that, that's too much alcohol. They really love the word occultic. Uh, now, you don't have to do it when they say occult. They say that word a lot too, but they love the word occultic. So listen for occultic and and take a drink. Well, I want to get back to uh, exposing some of these right. uh, characters that we see in the cartoons. So Phil, would you tell us about the characters we're seeing on the screen right now? Well, He's going to expose the characters. Here. Battle. But the good is empowered. He really wants to expose power. that character. This is Tila. They call her the warrior goddess or the patron saint of all warriors. You notice that she's wearing a cobra head breastplate and has a cobra head staff in mm -hmm. her hand. Man, now if cobra, cobra is bad, then is he's really not going to like G.I. Joe. And protection. And this young lady is involved in witchcraft, and you notice that she's a very voluptuous looking thing. And voluptuous. Very, That's very why he wants to expose her. And, and sometimes even negligee type thing. So on the show. So there's sensuality about the toys also. Does he know yes. what neg negligee is? is called many faces. Now, in a in a cartoon, many faces becomes demon possessed by drinking a magical potion that Skeletor gives him. Now, he is Many faces I I've, I've seen. I don't I didn't have most of these He-Man toys as a kid. Uh, one big reason for that is because well my parents believed stuff like this and so again. they <laughs> wouldn't let us have it. You mean In fact, I can only really think of one He-Man toy, toy that I ever had, and it was a gift, like a birthday gift from somebody, so from they wouldn't throw it away, skeleton type but, of um, to but they wouldn't let us mm -hmm. get uh, any. And back. I guess what you do with the toy, if we might try it here, is you can turn this little deal and you can make his face change, there you go. and there he becomes a, a good guy. Mm -hmm. and, High five. Uh, then the little child can, there's several faces, many faces in this little toy, which change, but you know, you can become a skeleton creature and we could go around to the different faces. And this he doesn't is kill, care kind of about the different the faces. Children. He only cares oh, about the, so the one that he thinks is evil looking. But you're kidding. Yeah, that's the, what, you know, if you have a demon living within you and then you're playing on the good side, then you, that's the obvious inference there. This character here is called Stratos. They call him the Winged Lord. He has the ability to fly to shoot fire from his hands. You'll notice that he's a half man half bird yeah now this is an inference from the gods of the ancients They're oh come half on men, half beast. this particular one the, is the no okay god the, this is He's really a, a stretch very popular revival within the toy and cartoon series they, they just wanted a guy that could fly and so they made him part bird ancient pagan gods and forming our toys after them right Oh my, my. What's, what's our next toy? Uh, well, we're going to take a look at some of the actual cult practices within the cartoon series. And part of the way I do that is to look at the comic books that come with them. This is the power of... The comic books 
and the cartoon series were not the same. Classic lotus position of meditation. Legs crossed, palms on the knees, with the palms out. He is levitating off the ground. In a yoga type position. Right. He has a power beam coming from his head holding a crystal ball. Crystal ball is used in necromology or communication with the dead. Right. And he's talking about that this crystal ball is the only thing that will allow him to focus all of his psychic energies. That's on the first page of one comic book. I the first page. So, all kinds of occultic things happening right in the. So even the if they book took here. some inspiration and from. Now, this one's um, the magic stealer. Some I occult sources. More than likely, they took inspiration from uh, movies now, and stuff, uh, the fantasy the movies, fantasy side, books, and, and things like that, rather than the actual the of uh, now, occultic sort. You don't have to drink when I say occultic. And these are the Only when they do. That rule that good world. The but it's serpent, still fantasy. Skulls, the do you know what they call these things? No, what? The spirits of the air. The spirits of the air. That's Ephesians 6:12, isn't right. it? Where we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual power, spiritual wickedness, principalities, principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, the powers of the air, that, or the that, spirits of the air, the spirits of the air. And but the that isn't literally what it says. They're Actually, translating that into meaning something that is from the Bible. Time. Right. When I was brought up, that's that's an I interpretation. That's not like literal. Bugs Bunny, uh, Donald Duck, Daffy Duck, I mean, Elmer Fudd, and all of the Looney Tunes. But today, there's a different kind of cartoon that's coming on our TV. Looney sets. Tunes was and very the violent. Is, is there a well Extremely violent. Plot, an insidious design right now to program and influence the minds of our children towards the occult and witchcraft. Yeah, I'm sure these we property like creators thought, hey, I want to influence kids away from the church and toward witchcraft. I'm and not at all motivated by uh, making millions of dollars like uh, by selling a right lot of plastic Phil toys. From Texas, and Phil has been doing a tremendous, hey, you can see them in the TV study of the that, that they're watching. Today. He's looked at the toys that they're buying in the toy stores, at the comic books that they read, and he's seen that they vicariously live their lives through these cartoon characters and toys. Now, if we miss the generation of youth that's coming up, if we do not minister to them, the Lord Jesus Christ, then we've lost the generation of tomorrow, and the Antichrist will have them. I believe the Antichrist is trying to program the minds of our youth, and he's getting his spell, his control on their minds, and today we're going to be talking about those youth. Now, in God's so, economy, children are very important. They but believe that the there is an Antichrist is and children, that the Antichrist is using well, a on, spell in church history, on yes, children. The church has overlooked the children on many occasions. Some people, in trying to, to put emphasis on the Mila. children, have said that children Mila, are not the right church now. Come of tomorrow. Here. But you that's wait. not a true statement. Children are the church of today. They're an integral part of the body of Christ hey. today. God has placed them within our bodies. And we Not have too to many sure occultics in this episode. Alive. Yes. You see, children, are, their relationship to God is as important to God as our relationship to God. Mm -hmm. And this should motivate us toward right, ministry. Well, th this is just children. straight preaching well, here. I, I, I get it. I understand their motivation. A for children. And when parents don't want to take uh, responsibility for children, they send them to sit in front of their TV babysitter. How much time does TV take in the average child's life? Well, in 1978, there was a study done that said children watched an average of 15,000 hours of television before they graduated from high school, while only spending 11,000 hours in the classroom. In 1984, the same study was done, and the figure is up to 22,000 hours on the average in front of the television set. That's a you know what? I'll bet that number is lower now so because kids don't watch TV like they school, used to. 33,000 hours of total input into a child's life before he's 18 years of age. 22,000 hours, and a lot of that is taken up in cartoons is that correct oh yes More. because we've noticed that the cartoons are not only just saturday morning but every afternoon Amoeba. the children they, they're at key times of the day when the children can watch them well yes they put children's programming on during times of the day when children can watch them at any That's... time day or night preschoolers make up 22 percent of the television viewing audience now when when these children watch television do they see it in the same way that we as adults do or are they affected differently than adults? 
Children view television in a vastly different manner How? than adults do. In fact, until a child is about the age of seven, he cannot differentiate between fantasy and reality as it deals with the television. Mm. It's like you turn on the TV is when you open the drapes to your living room window and sit them down and let them view their neighbors. And they see what's happening outside. See, that is, okay. I, I know that some kids have a hard time differentiating fantasy from reality, uh, and especially kids of a very young age, okay? But that doesn't mean that this is not fantasy. Like, all this He-Man stuff and all the magic and sword and sorcery stuff, still fantasy. Um, and I, the, the age group that they're aiming at... Uh, uh, should be able to tell that it's fantasy. TV producers to make sure she was okay, but and that took care of it. Ironically, he was okay because he supposedly they can't the tell that it's yeah, fantasy. To make sure that but what you're saying, okay. Phil, they think it's the real. The demons are real. The spells are real. The Antichrist with the spells and the magic and all of that. And no matter how much you try to explain it, they are saying that the kids can differentiate fantasy from reality. They think it's real. They're back an hour later pulling on your pant leg going, is it tomorrow yet? It's beyond their capabilities to understand time. So oh, kids can't. See, children are stupid. We have to think for them. Well, they view commercials as public service announcements, as though it's a really a happening that's really true. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I think what we ought to do right now is show a commercial or two. We've got a couple from Masters of the Universe and also... Okay, we're going to get to watch commercials. I actually enjoy watching right now. old commercials. That's entertaining. That was over really fast. It was a quick 10 minutes. I guess the next part is going to focus on commercials, and that's fun. Uh, sometimes I enjoy just watching vintage uh, commercials for toys or anything else. Uh, so that'll be fun in part four, but uh, that's next time. Not a lot of occultics, you know, so hopefully we'll get some more occultic in the next episode. But here's what I have to say about this. Uh, their justification for um, refusing to acknowledge that the, the uh, things they're criticizing are fantasy is because, according to them, children can't uh, differentiate between fantasy and reality. And while that may be true in some cases, it was not true for me. I knew that this stuff wasn't real. Even at a very young age, I, I, I knew that when I was watching a movie, I was watching a movie. Even if like a little kid for some reason does think that it's real, then they're still eventually gonna reach an age where they understand that it's not. But what's ironic is these guys, in a way, think that it is real. They think this is a, a plot by the Antichrist to use a spell to capture the hearts and minds of children and move them away from the church and into the occult. Regardless of whether children can tell the difference between fantasy and reality, these guys can't. All right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'll get to part four uh, in a, a few days probably, and um, we'll keep, uh, keep cruising along. Thanks for watching, and... Um, I'll see you tomorrow.